today um, just to get us started from Exodus chapter 2. It's a story of Moses uh, going out into the wilderness after he had killed the Egyptian uh, um, taskmaster. So I'm going to start at uh, verse 16. Excuse me, 15. But Moses fled from Pharaoh. He settled in the land of Midian and sat down by a well. The priest of Midian had seven daughters. They came to draw water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. But some shepherds came and drove them away. Moses got up and came to the defense and watered their flock. When they returned to their father Ruel, he said, How is it that you've come back so soon today? They said, An Egyptian helped us against the shepherds. He even drew water for us and watered our flock. He said to his daughters, Where is he? Why did you leave the man? Invite him to break bread. Moses agreed to stay with the man, and he gave Moses his daughter Zipporah in marriage. She bore a son, and he named him Gershom. For he said, I have been an alien residing in a foreign land. I think that's an interesting uh, statement for us, the, the, the way that Moses named his son. And we'll get to that in just a minute. It is an uh, important weekend, or important week in many ways, that uh, in the Twin Cities we are celebrating, and I think that's probably not the right word, celebrating. We're rather remembering what happened a year ago with the death of George Floyd at the hands of a, a Minneapolis police officer. It is something that, uh, that speaks to this idea that there are people in our world who are, feel like they are aliens in many ways. They are not part of a, the group that is part of this world. They are kind of looked down on or set aside or somehow dismissed. In many ways, that's kind of how Moses felt as he was in the wilderness, as a resident alien. And I think that's also how we are to look at ourselves in this world. Not in terms of looking down on the world, but to understand our place in it. For just as many people of color feel like they're a little disconnected from the culture, so too, as followers of Christ, we should say the culture is not the place that we should engage. 
We should not become comfortable, in other words, in the, in the world in which we live. God has not called us to live comfortably in this world. He's actually called us to point this world towards Christ. And that includes embracing those who are resident aliens, just as the priest of Midian did with Moses. That's our call as well, is to break down the barriers so that those of color don't feel like they're on the outside looking in. That's our responsibility to make that happen. How we live in the world as followers of Christ is to make all the difference in the world. Not only are we to welcome in the slave, the Jew, the Greek, the black, the white, but we are all supposed to point them all to Christ. Because God is a God who welcomes in the stranger, who welcomes in the alien. And on this Pentecost week, I intentionally filmed outside because there's a little breeze blowing. Just as a reminder for us that God's Spirit is at work in all of us as resident aliens, followers of Christ. To point all to Christ. Because as we look at our world, the answer is Christ and Christ alone. And so I invite you to think about what does it mean to share the love of Christ in your world? Talking to a neighbor over the fence. Being kind to the clerk at the store. Praying for those you know are hurting who are missing Christ and whom Christ misses. Those are all the pieces we are to be a part of and we are to share the hope of Christ. It is to share why Christ is vital to us, how Christ impacts our lives, how he changes our attitudes. And those joy stories that come from that are the things that encourage us all. So I invite you to allow the Holy Spirit to work in you, not just during Pentecost, but the Holy Spirit has been given to you as a down payment on your eternal life to live fully for Christ. I invite you to do that. See yourself as a resident alien. You are an alien of this world. Because your home is in heaven with God. Let me pray for us. Lord, thank you that you are the one who calls us to live differently in this world. Not in terms of being proud or conceited or thinking we have all the answers and we're better than everyone else around us. But rather, we are to love as you loved. You are to care for your enemies. Or we are to care for our enemies as you cared for your enemies. We are to walk with those whom society has disregarded. That is our call. Help us to do that, O oh God. I ask in your name. Amen. Well, we are quickly coming up on the end of May. And if you are considering being a part of the pastor nominating committee or would like to be considered to be a part of it, I would ask that you would get your questionnaire in um, by the end of this week so that session can begin to pray over them and begin to discern the people that God would have on our pastor nominating committee. There is the questionnaire available on our website. And uh, Either get it to me, set, mail it to me electronically, if you fill it out electronically, and just send it to me as, as a PDF. Or you can make a hard copy and put it in the office. And also, if those things are just not, you're not sure how to do either of those, then simply call me. Call me or get a message to me, 
to let me know you are interested and we can go from there. But we want to continue to move forward on this. And uh, I invite you, if, if God's been prompting you, to, uh, to fill out a questionnaire. Filling out a questionnaire doesn't mean that you will be a part of it. It just simply means that your, your name and your application will be prayed over. So I invite you to take advantage of that. Also, I want to let you know that uh, we are con- going to continue to have our interviews. Um, our elders will be interviewing you. Um, and if you are interested in being interviewed, please let me know. Either send it to my email, uh, bucketfaithchurchmn.org, or send it to the transition team, which is transition team, all one word, at faithchurchmn.org. Faith Church MN is also all one word. And then we'll get in contact with you and begin to uh, make that connection. So take advantage of that um, as we, uh, we continue to move through this process that God has us on to find our next pastor. Hope you have a good day. God bless everybody. Bye-bye now.